It's the big countdown that everyone's been waiting for. No, it's not the ball drop in Times Square. It's the Mari Show Top 10 Guests of 2009. They screamed and yelled. They ran off our set. How do I get out of this place? And some of them ran on it. You got to put me like this! But out of the thousands of people that came to our show this year, who will be chosen the most outrageous guest of 2009? Some of these guests heard, you are the father. You are the father. Some heard, you are not. They heard unbelievable lie detector results. Some guests heard unforgettable secrets. You what? In 2009, which guest was the most explosive? I love him. Which guest was the most shocking? Get out of my face, that's my son. I am not a chubby chaser. And who has chosen the most outrageous guest of 2009? The top 10 countdown starts now. As we prepare to ring in 2010, we here at The Mari Show have been preparing our top 10 most outrageous guest list. Who do you think will be number one? Let's get started. Because coming in at number 10 is a woman named Sylvia. Now, Sylvia was desperate to prove not only to her husband, Danny, but to both of his parents that Danny was the father of her daughter, Destiny. The reason Danny's parents denied Destiny, they said Destiny looked too Hispanic to be their grandchild. Watch. The day I met Danny, I knew I was going to end up being with him. His parents keep wrecking our marriage. I wish I could just smack the hell out of his mom. You know what they say? They say because you were in the cornfields, you came into contact with a lot of Hispanic people. I was two months pregnant, okay? Oh, oh, I'm not going to get out of here. I'm going to tear you the hell apart. I'm going to prove that your baby is not our grandchild. This baby looks nothing like my son. It looks Hispanic. <laughs> Results were in. Take a look. In the case of 18-month-old Destiny, Danny, you are the father. You've got a grandchild now, and you have to assume that responsibility. And he has to. And he has to. I said nothing to them until right now, and it felt so good. And he was to step up to the plate and do it the time. Maybe I'm a liar. But he was not a liar. We're happy to report after those results that Sylvia and Danny are doing great, working on repairing their relationship with Danny's parents. Now, coming in at number nine is a segment that we fondly call psychic cheating. Now, it's a woman named Rose who believed that the love of her life, Joseph, was sleeping with women behind her back. Now her proof, she claimed she was psychic. I've been married 16 years to Joseph. And now deep down in my heart, I know he's cheating on me. I believe that Joseph has had sex with my own mother. If this test proves that I was right all along, no, this all but us. No, 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 no. You're Marie. psychic. Yes, I you're, am. You get all kind of feelings. Right. He's with a girl. Right. I feel <laughs> <laughs> When he's thinking of a woman or he's doing something, I can feel my breath in cheek. I, I love you, Mommy. I will never cheat on you. Do you believe in psychics? Well, if you don't, maybe the results of this lie detector test will change your mind. You. Have you ever had sex with Rose's mother? 
for it, Murray. Go for it, because I'm going to knock your ass off that Fly detector test determined that was the truth. Do you have any other children besides the five you have with Rose? You said no. With the lie detector test determined that was a lie. A few months later, Rose returned to find out if Joseph was still cheating. But instead of finding out through tarot cards, Joseph decided to come clean. Tell her the first secret. My first secret is I have a girlfriend of eight months. Whoa! My um, second secret is I have a, another woman with six months pregnant. What are you doing to me? What are you doing to me and my kids? And she's having twins. 16 years! I gotta deal with these bastard kids now? Huh? Yeah. I'm done with you. My third secret, I was doing a strip show over 10 years and she didn't know. 16 years of my life! Stay with your horse. Here's the update. Joseph has been trying to win back Rose's heart and trust, but Rose has a different story. Take a look at her update. <laughs> You're by yourself. I'm by myself. Where's Joseph? In a car. In the car? He's sleeping in the car. He's looking for an apartment, and he's not going to my house ever again. Really? Stop! Stop! And then, and you said you wanted to give me a present. Yes, I am. What are you going to do? I'm going to read your tarot cards and tell you all these juicy cards? stuff. I can tell you this, Rose. All right? I don't need to read your cards. You're going to have a great future. I am. Coming in at number eight is a sad teen mom named Ariel. After finding out that she was pregnant at just 15, Ariel was devastated when her boyfriend Justin left her and began denying her baby. But Ariel wasn't the only person upset over this. Ariel's mom, Melissa, and Ariel's brother, Chris, were furious. Watch. When Ariel got pregnant just one month before her 16th birthday, she says the thought of being a teen mom terrified her. The only reason that... <laughs> I thought I could even be a mom was because of Justin. We were supposed to get married, and I thought he was going to be by my side. Now he denies the baby. Has he seen the baby? Yes, he has. Two weeks after my son was born, he came back. He dated again, and tried then? to make it work, and he left again. Why did he deny the child? I cheated on him with two guys. This is before. Oh. This is you got pregnant. So what you want is to prove that he's the father, and for him to come back into your life. Does your mother want him back? Hell no. He ain't coming back to my house at all! You will never see my grandson again! Remember, Ariel's mom wasn't the only person furious. Ariel's brother, Chris, was raging. Now it was time to hear from Justin and then Chris. I'm here because I have doubt that Seth is my son. My ex-girlfriend, Ariel, cheated on me with two other guys. The whole doubt that you have is because she cheated on you? I can't say yes, You cannot that's say he does not look at you. Look at him. Look, that little boy is yours. How can you deny him? Look at that boy in the eyes. Tell me he's not your son. Tell me. I treated this guy like a brother. You don't deserve to be called a man. You don't even deserve to be called a boy. Talk to me. Tell me. You and me, it's between me and her. There were two more things to do. Meet Ariel's mother, Melissa, and then get the DNA results. How you can deny my grandson? I made you my son! I called you son! We loved you! He has doubts because your daughter was no. with other guys. No. Mom LB, that was me! The case of three-month-old Seth. Justin, you are the father. My If you want to get back with him, getting up in his face is not the way to do it. You are not welcome back in my family. You are no brother of mine. You are no friend of mine. You are... Ah! We wish Ariel and her family a happy new year. Who will be named the number one Mari story of 2009? Stay tuned.
It's the big countdown that everyone's been waiting for. In 2009, which guest was the most explosive? Which guest was the most chalky? Nobody's I'm not a tubby chaser. And who has chosen the most outrageous guest of 2009? The answer is coming up. What was the most shocking moment of this past year? And who will be number one? It's New Year's Eve, and we're counting down the top 10 guests of 2009. Coming in at number seven, a feuding couple named Michelle and Darren. Michelle first came to the show to prove to her husband, Darren, that not only had she never cheated, but that Darren was the father of her son, Sammy. I have given eight years to a man named Darren, and now he has the audacity to deny my three-year-old son. You know why I'm so sure they're father and son? Because from the waist down, they both look like girls. That's right, the same tiny penis. Not only have we done a DNA test here, you took a lie detector test. That's right, test. I want my respect. I am not a hoe. I believe Michelle's trying to pass off another man's baby on me. The gig's up, babe. <laughs> Come on, blonde hair, blue Stop eyes, your pants. white, drop my pants. But Maury, what up? I love you. <laughs> Darren, you are the father. You've been with Darren. Have you ever had any sexual contact with any other men that Darren doesn't know about? You said no. You were telling the truth. <laughs> Darren was the father, and Michelle did pass the lie detector test. Now, fast forward four years. Michelle and Darren returned to the show. This time, he was not only feuding with Michelle, but he had a beef with a member of our family our own lie detector administrator, Ralph Barbieri. Darren claimed the only reason Michelle passed the test was because she had traded sexual favors with our Ralph. Watch. What did he say that you did with Ralph? He said I had oral sex with him so he wouldn't test. I would never compromise my integrity or the show. Four years ago, I was on this show and I got fooled. The only reason why I think Michelle passed the test, I think she gave oral sex to the lie detector guy, Ralph. Something was up. Tree of me doing this show. Listen, nobody saw me, mother. I've been breaking up fights for 15 years. I never expected it to do with my own people. You were asked if you had sexual contact with our guy, Ralph. You're telling the truth. If you had any sexual contact, you said no, you're telling the truth. You spoke to Michelle and Darren. Here's how they're doing. Hi, Maury. I was so hurt and angry that Darren believed that I passed the first lie detector test because I cheated on him with your lie detector test administrator route. So I decided to go back and prove him wrong a second time. But well, once again, Michelle proves me wrong. So I get on my hands and knees and I apologize to my wife. And Ralphie, right man, if you're listening, you know I love you, kid. I'm truly sorry from the bottom of my heart. So hopefully this will be the last time that I have to prove my innocence to Darren. Thanks, Maury. Thanks, Maury. Bye. Bye. Coming in at number six, a very distraught woman named Takara, who came here to reveal a secret not only to her boyfriend, Jason, but to her sister, Brittany. First, she confessed to Brittany. Watch. When we first met Takara, she was overcome with emotion and desperate to get the truth out. My sister really means a lot to me. I've been keeping a secret for a year and it's really hurt me. I know these things are going to crush my sister. I've been sleeping with Raymond for a year. Tell her the rest of the secret. You know I'm pregnant. Oh my God, Takara, don't tell me it's his baby. Please don't tell me that. Please, Takara. The baby might be Raymond. <gasps> oh my God! Raymond wants to apologize. It was time to meet Raymond. Brittany, I'm sorry, baby. No, I mean to... you ain't got to say to me. You ain't got to say to me. Takara also had to tell her own boyfriend, Jason. That's his cousin. And that's his cousin? I've been having a affair with Brittany's fiance for a year. What? The baby might not be yours. It might be right. 
we ought to find out once this baby is born whose it is, right? Right. After that show, Takara and Jason broke up. Raymond and Brittany broke up. Six months later, everyone came back to find out the results of the DNA test. I haven't been there for Takara because I don't think that's my baby. I know there's a 50% chance that this baby might be mine, but I hope it's not. I want to work things out with her sister, Brittany. You said you want to get back with Brittany. Yes, sir. I don't know if Brittany wants to get back with you. I'm trying to make it work, man. Jason, you are not the father. <laughs> Raymond, you are not. <laughs> we'll be glad to help you. <laughs> Those shocking results left us wondering who was the father of baby Amaya. When we caught up with Takara, here's what she had to say. Lauren, to find out that neither Jason or Rem was the father of Amaya, it's been really hard. It's been stressful not having a father for my daughter, but I'm not giving up. I'm trying to figure out if there are two or three other possibilities. As for my sister, we're trying to work on our relationship. So, Mari, hopefully I'll see you soon. Bye. Takara, keep us posted. We'll be happy to test the two or three men you believe could be Amaya's father. The countdown to the most memorable guests of 2009 continues after the break. It's the big countdown that everyone's been waiting for. In 2009, which guest was the most explosive? Which guest was the most shocked? And who was chosen the most outrageous guest of 2009? The answer is coming up. Get ready for a wild adventure. With Mistakes by Nosy, you'll get to see what it's like to handle unexpected situations. Whether you're a fan of Mori or just looking for some fun, these stories are just for you. Download now and make more mistakes. What was the most shocking moment of this past year? And who will be number one? We're halfway through our top 10 countdown of 2009, and it's time to take a break to give kind of an honorable mention award to a man named Edwin. Edwin was being accused by three different women of fathering four of their children. One man, three women, four babies. First, we met the three angry moms. Did he ask for his father? Just the other day, he said, Mama, where my daddy at? He starts denying your kids because of the way they look, right? Because I am Iraqi. What does he expect? Does he think these kids are going to come out black? No. Has he done anything for your child, Kaden? Two packs of diapers, what is that? In one week, we go through two packs of diapers. Latrice, Rumzia, and Nasley, y'all ain't nothing but hoes. Ho, ho, ho. And I ain't to Santa Claus. So why would they be pinning this on you? I guess they're in love. Swag or something. Swag! Nothing but a broke ass dick. Now it was time to meet the man with the swagger, Edward, and hear the results of the paternity test. When it comes to two-year-old Quincy, you are the father. What? When it comes to two-year-old Ishan, you are the father. When it comes to nine-month-old Inaya, you are the father. Hold on now, bitch! Hold on! And when it comes to ten-month-old Caden, you are the father. Danny diapers, Danny wipes, Danny shoes, Danny clothes. We need money. Uh, okay. Edwin, have a happy and healthy new year with your newfound fame. Now, let's get back to the countdown. Coming in at number five, a story about an 18-year-old named Christy, her 17-year-old brother, Joey, who came to the show to confront their 47-year-old father, Joe. They were furious that Joe was in love with a 19-year-old girl named Heather. Watch. My father is 47 years old, and he is living with a 19-year-old named Heather, and it is disgusting. Heather originally had a crush on me. I'm embarrassed to admit I even fooled around with her. The fact that Heather is not even a year older than me makes me sick. I've bit my tongue for too long, and I don't want her around me, my family, or my father. She hit on you. Yes, she did, Maury. Joey she didn't want her no more. No, I did not. So he went, went for the next best thing, my dad. Really? Yeah. Yep. Just like that? What kind of a girl do you think she is? Manipulative. I, I really don't think she's a good girl at all. I think my dad needs to find someone his age. And so... She's a spy. Was Joe choosing his teen girlfriend over his teen children? 
It was time to hear what Joe and Heather had to say about the situation. I may be 28 years older than Heather, but love should have no boundaries. I never knew that Christy and Joey had a problem with me until now. Christy and Joey are jealous of my relationship with Heather. Christy and Joey, I'm going to marry your father, and I'm a part of your family. Listen, I don't tell you how to live your life. You aren't supposed to tell us how to live ours. This is love. I love you, Joe. I love her. I love you. Shut up. If you can't respect me as your father, then I don't want to hear about it. Can you understand how your children could be a little upset? I'm you disappointed in the way you kids are. What have I done to you? The only reason I tell her is because Heather, I love Heather, my dad. Let me ask, why can't you hang out with somebody you want? I love you. It don't feel like you love me, yo. It feels like you love them more than me, yo. If you loved us, you would think us. I love you. Could this family find a way to coexist? Take a look at this video update. Hi, Maury. It's been a rough road since the show, but Joe and I are still together and working through it. Kids are still working on accepting our relationship, but the chance for everyone to speak their own mind has definitely put us on the right track. Right now, we are working on our relationship as a family, but things are getting better each day. Thanks, Thanks Maury. Bye. Bye. So let's move on. Coming in at number four a heartbroken brother and sister named Tanya and Robert, who came to the show hoping a DNA test could put an end to a lifelong mystery that had been ripping apart their family for 23 years. As long as I remember, my dad has denied my brother. He said the most horrible things. I've always felt made, wished I was never born. I was never invited to Christmas and Thanksgiving. On my birthdays, I call my dad. He never even returns my calls. I just want to ask my dad why he's never been there for me. What is it like having a parent who doesn't love you? It really hurts, Maury. I've been wanting him to be there for me for 23 years, and he hasn't been. Who raised you? My older sister did, Maury. She's been my best friend. She's been my mom. An older sister. It was time to hear from James and get to the results. 23 years, I've always wondered if Robert really was my son. When I look at Robert, I try to feel the connection, but I don't. At times, I have called him a bastard. I've told him not to call me dad. You can do that, James, without knowing the results of the test? Yes. Then why couldn't you do it 20 years ago? I was young. In your heart, do you think this is your son? I still have doubt. Man. James, you are the father. Oh, forgive me in my dad. We spoke to Tanya, Robert, and James, and they say they're looking forward to spending the holidays together as a happy family. So, guys, let us know how it goes. We wish you all the best. Who's going to be number one on our 2009 countdown? Stay with us. We'll find out. It's the big countdown that everyone's been waiting for. In 2009, which guest was the most explosive? I love him. Which guest was the I most shocking? You told me. And who was chosen the most outrageous guest of 2009? The answer is coming up. You are the guy. Get off my stage. What was the most shocking moment of this past year? And who will be number one? Today, we're counting down the top 10 guests and stories of 2009. Coming in at number three, it's a doozy. It involved a woman named Kayla, who came to the show to prove to her ex, Dustin, that he was the father of her son, Malachi. The twist, Kayla claimed the reason for Dustin's denials was Dustin's boyfriend. That's right, I said boyfriend. His name is Russell. Take a look. When I first met Dustin, I always knew that he was gay, but we ended up falling in love. Dustin started to deny Malachi one year ago when he met his boyfriend, Russell. I get the feeling you don't like Russell. No, I don't. I don't like you neither. I don't think he should have his two cents in mind in Dustin's business. I'm gay. Kayla was an experiment. I really don't believe I'm the father of Malachi. It was a bad experiment. 
She knew for a fact that I was gay. You remember what you said? I was the first female who ever got. That's not true. Shut up. You can't tell me to shut up. How about not? Is it true that he was never ever challenging whether he was the father of this child until you came along? That is. Lie. She needs to back off and quit being a bitch okay. so we can take care of this. Okay. If he's you my kid, have to fight he's coming to hell. Because I ain't having no mother. I ain't having my kid. Call to me, daddy. The results were in. Would, to quote Kayla, Malachi be calling two men daddy? When it comes to one and a half year old Malachi, Dustin, you are the father. <laughs> He don't have to call Sorry, Russell that's, Daddy. That's fine. Whatever. You don't need to just get out of his face. You stupid and you're a bastard. I've done this by myself. You ain't my son. You're not getting my son for me. Oh, I've done it for you. Get out of my face. That's my son. No, I'm not. going to be no, able to see not. my kids. You I know dare what? You. I dare you. You know what? Let's calm down. Things were certainly tense after the results were revealed, which left us wondering would this threesome ever find a way to be a family? Take a look. Maury, I know that Dustin was proven to be Malachi's father, but I meant what I said. I don't want my son calling two men daddy, and I do not like Dustin's lifestyle. I think that being gay is wrong and disgusting. Until Dustin changes the way he lives, my son is not going to be at his house. I've tried and tried to make this work between Kayla and I, but she absolutely refuses to let me see my son Malachi. And Kayla has a problem with our lifestyle? What I would like for her to do is open her heart and her mind for the sake of their child. Kayla needs to get over it and accept the fact that I'm gay. It looks like there's a lot to sort out, so we'll keep you posted on this family's progress. This next family feud involved an angry grandmother named Sandra, who came to the show to prove to a woman named Natasha that her son Vincent was not the father of Natasha's baby, Vincent Jr. See, Sandra claimed she caught Natasha cheating while Vincent was on vacation. Whoa. First, we heard from Natasha. You got pregnant before he went away. Way before he went away. And he wasn't denying my child to her fat behind got in the picture. Oh, oh yeah. So what you're saying is that Vincent is a mommy's boy. Yeah, stuck on her breast. Oh. Natasha spent her two-week-old baby Vincent Jr. on me, but I don't think I'm the father. When that DNA test comes back, Tasha, take a shriveled up ass back to the center and take That's his son, right. so that's awesome. Natasha. I apologize. Welcome oh, to the family. It's mine. That's awesome. That was a year ago. Now, recently, Sandra was shocked when Vincent dumped Natasha for another woman. This woman, Amanda. See? And, and guess what? They had a baby. And her name was Amaya, and San Sandra, the grandmother, she didn't think that that was her son's baby. Watch this. We've been that down this road before. Yeah, Marty, but I know that's not his baby. He left his son to be with her and that baby, and he don't even know if that's his baby. How do you know? Because she said and she admitted that she cheated. I heard that you want Vincent back with, with his family. That's right, with his no, son. That's that's not not She thinks you're not good for her son. We're gonna be together till my heart stops beating. Vincent, you are not. How do I get out of here? Vincent, I got one question to ask you. I'm single, what's up? I'm single. Yeah, baby, I'm single, what's up? I'm going to my son. We'll be back with more of the top 10 of 2009 after the break.
It's the big countdown that everyone's been waiting for. In 2009, which guest was the most explosive? Which guest was the most chocolate? And who has chosen the most outrageous guest of 2009? The answer is coming up. Get ready for a wild adventure. With Mistakes by Nosy, you'll get to see what it's like to handle unexpected situations. Whether you're a fan of Mori or just looking for some fun, these stories are just for you. Download now and make more mistakes. What was the most shocking moment of this past year? And who will be number one? Today, we're counting down to the top 10 most outrageous stories of 2009. Now, we're going to take a break from the countdown to pay a special tribute to an incredible guest. Her name was Alicia. And she was convinced her boyfriend, Paul, was cheating on her with her very best friend, Dominique. Her evidence? I've got two words for you. Chicken Tetrazzini. Watch. When me and Paul first got together, Dominique couldn't stand Paul. But now she coming to my house, cooking them chicken tetrazzini. If I find out that Dominique and Paul are sleeping together, Dominique, our friendship is over and Paul is out the door. You think he has won him over with chicken tetrazzini? I don't know what she do with the chicken tetrazzini, but Paul love it. Dominique can cook, but I know she's seducing my Does man she... with a chicken tetrazzini. <laughs> How long y'all been going together? Me and Paul been together four long years. Me and Dominique been best friends for seven years. What's he say about that? He denies it to the fullest. Paul was supposed to take a lie detector test, but in a shocking turn of events, he decided to reveal several shocking secrets instead. First, I have to tell you that I cheated on you and slept with one of my ex-girlfriends. I slept with one of your family members three times, and the last time was just a month ago. Finally, I slept with Dominique one time. That is my best friend! You, you've been my best friend so damn long, Dominique! How can you sleep with me? After that show, Alicia became an internet sensation when chicken tetrazzini videos started popping up all over the web. Now, if you're interested in making chicken tetrazzini for your loved one, you can visit our website, marishow.com, for the recipe. Now, we're down to number two. It involved a pastor. His name was Doug. Came to the show to reveal a salacious secret to his wife, Lucretia. Take a look. What's the secret? I've been um, having an affair with her best friend, Alanda. Your wife's involved in the church, and this woman is involved in the church. Who do you want to be with? My wife. I thought our family was strong. I just can't imagine. <laughs> What could be wrong? Tell her, Douglas, why you brought her here. In the last eight or nine months, I've been having an affair. In the show. The person I've been having an affair with is a friend of mine. I knew it. I knew it. I've been messing with somebody, too. What comes around goes around. You all have kids. You better hope they're here. Douglas, this is a lot deeper than we thought. Right. After the show, we gave Douglas and his two kids a DNA test. It turns out neither of the kids biologically belong to Douglas. We spoke to Douglas and Lucretia, and they're still together, and they're going to marriage council. We'll be back with the number one story of 2009. In 2009, which guest was the most explosive? Which guest was the most chocolate? And who was chosen the most outrageous guest of 2009? The answer is next. You are the guy. Get off my stage. What was the most shocking moment of this past year? And who will be number one? So this was Rico before, and this is what Rico looks like now. For y'all on the first row, don't be looking under my skirt, because there are some snakes on this plane. You are a self-proclaimed nerd? Nerd is not the word. There was this guy, Juan, right? Yeah. And Juan kind of really put it on. Every day was something different with Juan. Let's see if you recognize this picture. 
<laughs> oh my God, that's Rico. I want you to see Rico today. I'm speechless. Okay, it's time to reveal who is number one on the most outrageous guests of 2009 Countdown. Earlier in the season, we met Brandy and Todd. Brandy was convinced the love of her life, Todd, had cheated while she was laid up in the hospital for 36 days. Take a look. I spent 36 days in a hospital. I almost died. I had a gallbladder surgery. Yes. Come and visit me one time. Then he disappears at night, right? At night he goes jogging for three hours about 10, three 11 o'clock at night he goes jogging. Uh, uh, you don't jog well, for three hours at night time. You go get your wham bam, thank you man, and come right back and say I love you. It's breaking my heart that she's thinking I'm doing this to her. Brandy said that I cheated on her with two of her friends while she was in the hospital and I did not. Why didn't you visit your fiance more than one time? Because most of the time, whenever she's in the hospital, it really hurts. 36 days. You stay my your woman. If that was him, I'd be there. I have to let something happen to him, and I promise you, I'd drop everything to be there for that man. So, Todd swore he wasn't cheating. It was time for the results to be revealed. But before we got to that, we wanted to show Brandy what we caught Todd doing on a hidden camera. Our special ops expert, Dave Vitale, he put Todd in a green room with a sexy female decoy. Oh, you ain't seen no. Oh, my God. Oh, Stop it, you! Ah! Give me the results right now. We asked you if you ever did on Brandy in the last two years. You said no, that was a lie. More than 10 women. You were asked if you cheated on Brandy with both of her friends while she was at the hospital. You said no. That was a lie. A threesome with those two girls. You can get your dad and get out of my house. Go to your daddy. You're sorry. You're sorry. Why did you do that to me? So, Brandy claimed it was over, but was it really? When we caught up with them a week later, Brandy not only took him back, but agreed to marry Todd on one condition, that he take another lie detector test before the wedding. He did, right here on our show. Are you gonna marry him if he fails the test? I would say yes and no. So well, you I, don't know? I don't know. Are Sorry. you scared that he's cheating with the exes? I'm scared to death something's wrong, but I pray in my heart and in my soul that nothing uh, Okay. I asked you since the show, have you cheated on Brandy with anybody else? <laughs> X or not? You said no. You're telling the truth. Yeah. We wanted your marriage to start off on the right foot, so we're going to send you on a honeymoon to Las Vegas. <laughs> and the hotel and accommodations are being provided to you by our friends at the Golden Nugget Las Vegas. Brandy and Todd are currently busy planning their big wedding at the Golden Nugget in Las Vegas. And they're looking forward to spending 2010 and the rest of their lives as husband and wife. We hope. We'll be right back after this. What was the most shocking moment of this past year? Yeah. And who will be number one? I want to thank all of you for making this year a special one for The Mari Show. We hope that you have a healthy, happy, and prosperous 2010. Until next year.
are not the party. <laughs>